Fine Arts Gallery, the Alastair Crowley Exhibition. What does it mean to you to have Alastair Crowley's exhibition here in Perth? Very good question. Um, been able to see, I've seen a lot of his artwork in print form and photography and been able to actually see it in person to see the size of it, the actual proper colour tone, to get somewhat um, metaphysical about it, to see sort of the energy that comes out of the painting, it's just like a really powerful thing. To see it otherwise, as I said in my speech, I'd have to travel to Paris or Munich to see it and being in Perth is a good start. It's been a good turnout tonight, so obviously there is some appeal to his art and Everyone, most everyone's still here and still very excited, so therefore they seem to be having quite a positive reaction to it. And do you have a favourite piece that you'd like to show us? My favourite would probably be the um, um, Herophant, which is one of the three tarot studies on the wall. The Herophant is based, it's card number five in the um, Thoth tarot deck. Um, metaphysically, the Herophant is um, about being the connection between the divine and the um, physical world and this is his um, first representation of or his first illustration of that particular type of energy. You talk a lot about the, the metaphysical and the spiritual, is it a big part of your personal life? Yes, it's an incredibly large part of my life but one could argue that it's not, whether there is a spiritual realm or not, by acting out a spiritual sort of understanding and idea you're shaping your own mind so it becomes a psychological improvement in yourself so the actual relevance whether it exists or not is separate to having a discipline and training yourself to be more relaxed and more focused and so forth. Tell us a little bit about it. The inspiration for this component of the exhibition uh, was uh, the, the period that uh, Crowley's uh, paintings are based on in the Abbey of uh, Kefalu um, in the Palermo collection. I first heard a description of uh, at the October Gallery in the late 90s where they did an Alistair Crowley exhibition in London. And in that exhibition, um, Kenneth Anger was uh, one of the guests and he was basically kind of reading out a, uh, a description of the murals and this is where uh, Crowley was inspired by Gauguin's uh, uh, sort of painting and his sort of house in Tahiti you know, and, and that so basically um, he illustrated and, and sort of you know uh, did murals on all of the walls but um, over the course of time uh, a lot of the uh, you know the, the, the Abbey of Thelema basically fell into sort of, you know, decay. So a lot of that, you know, of the original paintings and, you know, that were on the walls and stuff were lost. But uh, this uh, description of the, um, of all of the murals sort of uh, like remains, that was sort of like, uh, so uh, when I heard that in the late 90s and uh, when we were talking to Robert Barati, we were talking about these uh, descriptions because it was a, a very rich source of artistic inspiration. He decided that he would get a few artists to interpret uh, some of the descriptions because the paintings aren't there. So these, these paintings are basically from some of Crowley's descriptions of what would have been on the Abbey. Are you inspired by your own imagination, would you say? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've uh, been a, been a you know, couple of decades involved in uh, uh, Crowley's magical order, and I've been a big fan of Crowley for, you know, many years. And um, so, yeah, of course, I'm, my artistic style is uh, radically different from his. And um, but, uh, but I think, you know, the uh, from what I know about also his. Uh, philosophic and occult sort of uh, um, corpus, sort of tried to integrate that in my description. I mean, the, some of the descriptions are fairly simple, you know, like it's like a, a Chinese temple dog, you know, and some of them are a little bit more, you know, uh, are different, so yeah, absolutely, yeah. Would you say that the, the colours you, you have used are symbolic? I don't know if they're, uh, they're not symbolic in a sense of they, 
I don't think my color palette sort of follows uh, any uh, in, in empirical kind of mode, like in say, for example, the history of Western painting, or or even uh, there may be some sort of slight, cap, you know, cabalistic references or the hermetic tables of correspondences where different colors sort of, uh, you know, uh, talk about sort of different planetary or astrological energies and stuff. But that sort of stuff is enfolded in it. But uh, usually my choice of color is probably like more influence from my exposure to Mexican folk art and Chinese folk art. Different, uh, you know, different travels that I've had overseas. Uh, but, but, but that being said, there's also some color references that would tie into uh, a more um, looser occult sort of uh, color paradigm. Or In saying that, I, I find a lot of audience members uh, find the art terrifying at times. My work in particular probably subverts that sort of, um, uh, I think, you know, the veneer of which uh, the subject matter is approached. Probably a, a sort of a subversion of that is my use of colour palette because it sort of allows sort of an inroad and it's not like it doesn't have the accretion of um, what you would usually expect with the subject matter. about your artwork? Yeah, this is called The Equinox of the Gods. Um, it tells the story of how Alistair Crowley, uh, the prophet of Thelema, um, who we see as the most modern prophet. You had people like Moses, gave the Lord of mankind, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, received the divine words from Allah. We um, see Alistair um, as receiving the new law for mankind in Cairo 1904. So this tells that story of, um, yeah, how it all sort of happened. And he's brought the new word to mankind and modernized religion, got all the nature gods in there, knew it, the queen of space, uh, the divine sun, moon, Thoth, Tahuti, um, and with his wife in, in the, uh, the main pyramid in uh, Cairo, he did a ritual just mucking around and yeah, something happened. He, he tapped into something and he wrote down the text and that's the book of the law that we've got and he started a whole school on it a whole wisdom school of initiation so you study that book um, you don't take it literally it's it's heavy in parts and beautiful in parts and yeah it, it, it liberates the individual and um, you know puts the god back inside you know instead of out there so it's a whole new, new modern take on uh, religion and yeah, we just, um, we love it. And what do you expect to um, have the audience uh, react to, to your artwork? So far, some people, yeah, they, they like it. Um, and they, they can ask me, yeah, what it means, what the deeper sort of symbology is, and I'll explain it. It is, it's, there's a lot of symbology in, you know, in, in Thelema, and you've got to look beneath the layers. So, yeah, I mean, we could talk all night about this, all week, really. So, yeah, um, hopefully, yeah, it just gets people thinking. Um, and, and explains, makes a bit more sense of things for people, that it's just not too way out there, you know, of the whole God thing and religious thing. Just try to bring it back to sort of nature and a bit more of a simplified view. very it's very very hard to I mean of course the um, the Sun God the uh, self-portrait is a it's it's such a classic uh, and, I, and I particularly I do like the two uh, early versions of the tarot cards the moon card and the Hierophant and even that piece over there I think they're almost like astral landscapes they're not real like this you know he was doing landscapes and of you know inspired from uh, Sicily and where he was but then there's a Chinese pagoda, I mean, like, and then, you know, so, I mean, it's, um, it's wonderful and, uh, yeah, I think it's more than just that, so. A colleague of mine happens to own one of the paintings this evening, and 
to be here amongst such you know, historical works, uh, you know, discovered in, you know, from, in Sicily, all done through 1920 to 1923, at the time of, like Picasso, post-Cubist, post-World War I, but just, just to see the, not the arrogance of Crowley, but in your face Crowley, like if you notice painting number two, where it actually gives the bird, the middle finger, the digit, he was very much in your face. No painter in history had the audacity to, Crowley not being a specifically a painter, but a writer, lyricist, musician, mountaineer, all the rest of it. Brilliant. I'm really enjoying the exhibition a lot. I'm appreciating the history behind the art. I'm liking the esoteric references. Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I was here a few months ago for another exhibition, another Crowley exhibition. Um, I think this is a lot more extensive and um, I found the information that was given here a lot more um, explanatory about the history of Crowley, giving me some perspective about his art. Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Are you thinking about buying any of the pieces? Well, it's my birthday on Sunday and I really do like a few of the Nolte's. I'm really considering, yeah, I'm looking at those and it's, it's in my budget. It's a lot cheaper than, than, than the Crowley's, which are sort of up there in the 20,000 plus type of market. Um, See, so I'm thinking about it, yeah. Thank you for joining us at the Alastair Crowley Exhibition. It has been a unique and Australian first experience. Until next time, I'm Madeline Page and we'll see you on Gallery Watch.